The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. The test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much, it is whether we provide enough for those who have too little. This is preeminently the time to speak the truth, the whole truth, frankly and boldly. Only a foolish optimist can deny the dark realities of the moment. Human kindness has never weakened the stamina or softened the fiber of a free people. A nation does not have to be cruel to be tough. In these days of difficulty, we Americans must and shall choose the path of social justice, the path of faith, the path of hope, and the path of love toward our fellow man. I see one-third of a nation ill-housed, ill-clad, ill-nourished. A radical is a man with both feet firmly planted, in the air. A conservative is a man with two perfectly good legs, who, however, has never learned to walk forward. A reactionary is a somnambulist walking backwards. A liberal is a man who uses his legs and hands at the behest of his head. Happiness lies not in the mere possession of money, it lies in the joy of achievement, in the thrill of creative effort. Industrial combination is not wrong in itself. The danger lies in taking government into partnership. Men and nature must work hand in hand. The throwing out of balance of the resources of nature throws out of balance also the lives of men. Among American citizens, there should be no forgotten men and no forgotten races. This generation of Americans has a rendezvous with destiny. We must scrupulously guard the civil rights and civil liberties of all our citizens, whatever their background. We must remember that any oppression, any injustice, any hatred, is a wedge designed to attack our civilization. They, who seek to establish systems of government based on the regimentation of all human beings by a handful of individual rulers, call this a new order. It is not new and it is not order. I propose to create a civilian conservation corps to be used in simple work. More important, however, than the material gains will be the moral and spiritual value of such work. I have seen war. I have seen war on land and sea. I have seen blood running from the wounded. I have seen the dead in the mud. I have seen cities destroyed. I have seen children starving. I have seen the agony of mothers and wives. I hate war. Unless the peace that follows recognizes that the whole world is one neighborhood and does justice to the whole human race, the germs of another world war will remain as a constant threat to mankind. We must be the great arsenal of democracy. We have always known that human self-interest was bad morals. We know now that it is bad economics. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from what? Freedom from fear. It is time to extend planning to a wider field. In this instance, comprehending in one great project many states directly concerned with the basin of one of our greatest rivers. No country, however rich, can afford the waste of its human resources. Demoralization caused by vast unemployment is our greatest extravagance. Morally, it is the greatest menace to our social order. We have faith that future generations will know here, in the middle of the 20th century, there came a time when men of good will found a way to unite and produce and fight to destroy the forces of ignorance.